Hi, I'm Gene Kornakia. At St. Peter's University, we believe that all citizens need to understand the importance of higher education and how it affects our lives. That's why we're proud to support the important programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at Two Gateway. Funding has been provided by Guarini Institute for Government and Leadership at St. Peter's University. Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. The New Jersey Economic Development Authority. The law firm of Gibbons, PC. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. And by St. Joseph's Health. A passion for healing. It's what's inside us. Promotional support provided by NJ Advance Media. And by Meadowlands Chamber. Building connections, driving business growth. Welcome to State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We're, in fact, coming to you. I can get this out from the beautiful Agnes Ferris NJTV studio. Once again, we're joined by uh, Steve Phillip, who is the mayor of Jersey City. That happens to be the second largest city. I do this every time. Yeah, you're a little biased. You're from Newark, but... Uh, Are we not in the largest city? It's debatable. It's Brick City. It's debatable. And I debatable. knew you also have a very productive relationship with the mayor here. Yeah, I'll be at a State of the City tonight, and uh, he's a good personal friend, and uh, I wish him the best. But, uh, you know, like, actually, I think the better Newark does, Jersey City does. We're intertwined. So. You're not competing? Isn't everybody competing for uh, 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 valuable uh, development and, and tax rateables? No. I mean, I, I, you know what? I, I don't think we've kind of gone head to head on any sort of issue like that. I mean, I'm a cheerleader for him. And uh, the only thing I would have changed in hindsight speaking on that is I probably would have joined him on the Amazon proposal. Instead of doing a competing proposal, I should have thought yeah. about it a little bit more and said, let's do a regional one together. Sure. He would have been amenable to that. We would have focused a little bit more on the housing, him on the commercial side, probably would have been a little bit more appealing. Mayor, help us on that, because I know the New York yeah. situation, people decide for themselves what they think of the question of whether them losing yeah. Amazon made sense for them yeah. or not. The competition to try to get them here. Yeah. Overall, tax incentives, government tax incentives yeah. to attract certain businesses who may not otherwise come yeah. overall, you say? I think, well, look, it's been good for Essential? Jersey. Essential in the right circumstances. So you have, uh, you have examples like Goya in Jersey City, right? That they were in Secaucus, they threatened to move, they moved one mile and they got a massive incentive. Um, that sort of example, which New Jersey has done repeatedly, doesn't make sense. You what have about a, if they were potentially gonna move out of the state? Yeah, I, don't I, don't know, think, I don't know the particulars. I, I, so, so, so to me, um, I think you should call the bluff on that, really, because it's difficult to move. And generally, I think that that narrative is one that the companies just use in order to garner the tax credits. I think we should be targeting with the governor saying some of the smaller businesses, some of the kind of new technology, and also, you know, the big corporations outside of uh, New Jersey. Let's talk about innovation. Yeah. Um, transportation in Jersey City, huge issue. Yeah. What innovation is going on, technologically or otherwise, yeah. to improve transportation in and around Jersey City? So let me start by saying Jersey City is one of the few, and Newark for that matter, one of the few cities of our size in the entire country that doesn't control any of our transportation. We don't control the light rail. We don't control the ferry system, the path system, the bus system. Major obstacle. Uh, we are hopeful to roll out later this year a system that... Uh, um, that has worked in some of the other larger cities. It's similar to kind of Uber technology, but branded buses that'll actually pick people up and they'll take them to the path system. And we'll use the areas that are, you know, deserts from transportation to kind of start off. Curious, switch gears dramatically. There is no city in this country that has not had challenging, difficult issues between police and minority community. Yeah. yeah. Jersey City is no exception. Um... What will you tell us? What has been going on in Jersey City yeah, to I, try I to would, avoid what has would, happened I, in so I, many I, other I, American I, I cities? Would, I would debate that fact. I think that we've been, 
we've done a lot on recruiting to make sure that our police department reflects the diversity of Jersey City. When challenging I came into, to do that? Yeah, it's really challenging, actually, because, you know, uh, people move. It's hard to follow up. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of reasons why people fall through the cracks on the application process. So sometimes you have to hold hands. And then, you know, a lot of time people get into the academy and they realize that this kind of paramilitary sort of operation is not for them. So um, you got to really work the community to make sure that it reflects the community that it serves, work the police department. But we've hired 250 officers, 70% mm. of them are minorities. We really changed the paradigm and uh, we've been seeing crime decrease. Speaking of crime, speaking yeah. of people who are perceived, some people who perceive what a crime is or is not, legalizing marijuana. Yeah. Your community took a lead on this. Yeah. The state legislature and the governor, as we do this program in the spring of 2019, grappling with it. We don't know if voters in the state yeah. will ultimately have to make that decision through some sort of right. referendum. What do you think the solution is? Well, there, there's two things that are important to me and the mayor of Newark. Uh, the first is the expungement component, making sure that it is extensive and robust. Clarify that for someone yeah. of the record. Look, you know, yes, correct. The, the reality is that the proposed legislation only deals with small quantities of marijuana today, um, which isn't acceptable for us. And if you think about it, it's hypocritical. Excuse saying, me, the proposed legislation to legalize cannabis in the state. Yeah, yeah, it deals with expunging small right. quantities of selling or possessing marijuana. And that's really not appropriate and it's hypocritical. So you're basically going to say that I'm going to keep somebody's record who sold drugs or marijuana on this corner, but today I'm going to legalize it for a corporation on the same corner that can make tens of millions of dollars. So there needs to be extensive expungement. The second part is a fair tax rate for host municipalities. Meaning what you get back yeah. for having a business yeah. based in your community needs to be higher. Correct. So, so other municipalities around the country where states have legalized marijuana has been in the range of 5%. We're looking for the same. Gun control. Yeah. Why is that such an issue for a mayor of a large United States city? So we've, uh, I'll put it in perspective, Jersey City, we've had about 500 guns taken off the street, illegal guns, over the last two years. They come from out of state. And uh, you got to think of it from a police officer or resident standpoint, how terrifying that is. So. Um, I just came from a press conference with the governor where he was discussing raising fees on um, licenses and making it more transparent for uh, the public to see where and who's manufacturing those guns. Mm. It's a tough situation for cities, and we need some help on the federal and state level. Um, this one you didn't expect. Uh, we're doing a new series. We're actually launching right yeah. here at NJTV studios called Think Tank. Okay. It's New Jersey, New York folks that we have talking about larger issues outside of our yeah. borders, if you yeah. will. One of them is the future of the Democratic Party. Yeah. Um, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah. And there are others, let's say Nancy Pelosi and others who are in a different wing of the party. Do you actually say to yourself, this is where I fit as a Democrat? No. Um, no look, there, there are things that are concerning for me. Um, the movement towards socialism is concerning for me. I, 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 I'm, I'm not there. Um, you know, some of the uh, legislation that's been pushed, the narratives around uh, pro-choice and pro-life that are getting more and more um, extreme, you know, I have concerns around. Um, I, I think that... Is the term progressive meaning something different than you thought it meant when you called yourself a progressive? Um, you know, I, I think it's really hard to work with, like, labels. Everybody calls themselves a progressive mm -hmm. or a, a, a Democrat or a socialist. Uh, but if you look at the policies that people are pushing today where the Democratic presidential candidates are moving, I think it's a little bit far left to get uh, elected in a general election if you uh, nominate the wrong candidate. I know we're doing this in the spring. Cory Booker, legitimate shot of being president or getting the nomination first. I mean, I'm probably the only, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the larger city mayors that hasn't been there endorsing him. The only reason is because I want to put my resources in the person that I think has the best chance of beating Donald Trump. That's the number one priority for me. And I don't feel just because somebody's from New Jersey, I need to be there. I want to listen to all the candidates. It's going to be a field of like 20 people. It's going to be interesting, and I promise we'll have you back to talk about that and other yeah. issues. Uh, Steve Phillip is the mayor of uh, a great city, Jersey City, which yeah. happens to be a second say largest. I mean, uh, you're I'm just going, saying. I mean, it is what it is. You're going to say it, but we'll talk in 2021. <laughs> Thank you, right. Steve. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. And we're right back right after this. 
To see more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at stateofaffairsnj.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. There he is, State Senator Declan O'Scanlan, Republican from the 13th Legislative District. Where is that? Down Monmouth County, Bayshore, Monmouth County, uh, Little Silver, Fairhaven, Rumson, all the way up to Keyport, Keensburg, Union Beach, Middletown in between, and, and uh, 16 other great towns. You sure didn't leave anyone out? Oh, I did, but I'm not going to go through the whole number, because I'll forget one. And, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, you won't forget this, the fact that the governor, Governor uh, Murphy, has put out his budget. Go on our website, find out more. Also, check out Energy TV News every night to find out what's going on in state government. And you, my website, DeclanOSkinland.com, where my editorial about the governor's budget is, uh, will cover things comprehensively. Well, Senator, why don't you do this? Tell us what you like and what you didn't like about, this, about the governor's it, address. It's about priorities. It's about focusing on the things that are not particularly sexy, like spending new money on various programs, but taking care of the bills that we already have and the commitments we already have, including our commitments to public workers, uh, property tax relief, you know, boring but important stuff like that, uh, and getting away from the idea that every single budget is going to include new taxes, especially when we're not. Uh, more greatly ramping up uh, these <clears throat> obligations. Uh, there's not so you don't like, excuse me for interrupting, uh, Senator O'Scanlan, the proposed increase on taxes on those who earn $1 million or more that the governor has put out, you think is a... I think it's, it's extraordinarily ill-informed. But we need uh, that revenue, don't we? You know what? Well, then let's, let's go to an 80%. Let, let's take it to its logical conclusion. Let's tax those people's income to 80%. No one would say that that's a good idea. They'd say these people are going to leave in droves. At some point, there's a straw that breaks the camel's back. We've already exceeded that. There are people leaving this state because they can afford it. They don't have to be in Florida for six months. They can, all you have to do to is establish be out of the residency. state for six months in a day. They've already got a house in Florida, a condo in Florida, uh, for four months. Get a Manhattan uh, 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 apartment. Stay there for four-day weekends for another 12, 15 weeks a year. And you take your taxes down to zero. So they can do that. They have done that. Uh, and it's a terrible message to send. We just last week had uh, folks at the national level saying avoid states with, with incredibly high levels of unfunded man. But respectfully, uh, Senator, sorry for interrupting. The governor says this is about tax fairness, that those who earn the most need to pay just a little bit more in order to have universal pre-K, in that, order to have New Jersey Transit get the money it we, needs, in order been, to do a whole range of things. We've been hearing that for 20 years as we slowly tighten the noose on these people, as we slowly continue to squeeze the, the, the goose that's laying the golden eggs to the point where you crush it, it doesn't lay any more golden eggs or it flies to Florida. Uh, there, there is a limit. And we've reached it. There's no question. You don't have to listen to me. Listen to Andrew Cuomo. Last I looked, he was not a strange, arch-conservative, cruel... What does he say uh, about spendthrift. taxes, the governor of he New York? He says the worst thing you could do is continue to raise taxes on the wealthy because they have the ability to, to leave. Now, well, look, we have a progressive system. I get it, and there's an argument for that. But we've gone to the point where we can't go back to that well. We are already taxing these people in this state higher than they pay almost anywhere else. Uh, so... And they have alternatives. They can go to Florida and zero. That can make zero hundreds taxes. of thousands zero of dollars yep, uh, but, but, of, of income for these Senator, people. Senator, let's stay on this. But you've, you've also gotten more and more involved in transportation issues. Yep. Describe, in your view, the condition of New Jersey Transit, A, in terms of how it serves commuters every day, and B, whether the governor's right to provide more dollars well, for New Jersey Transit. Okay, let's take it from the top. The condition of New Jersey Transit on behalf of the, of the huge number of commuters in the 13th Legislative District, very technical legislative term, it sucks. Now, <laughs> what do we need to do? We need vastly more investment there than the piddling money that the governor has dedicated to. Hold on, wait a minute. You want to spend million. more money there, there's but there's no not question. enough. Hold there on, are, but he's trying to get more revenue that in order to do that. That is one of the unsexy things that should be on, higher on a priority list than investing more in pre-K, which is questionable the value of it. You, you can argue that. Questioning Th then, the value of then, universal pre-K? Uh, there's no question. I, 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 can, I can question Senator. that. From a very practical standpoint, there's people that I know in the educational uh, realm who say, fully fund the formula before you get to funding pre-K. Steve, we don't have unlimited amounts of money. If we did, I'd say fund pre-K, no problem. We don't. 
There has to be an adult in the room who finally says, we've got to prioritize all these things, get what we've already committed to right before we make new investments. That's a pretty reasonable well, thing. Well, along the same lines, what about um, providing free community college that the governor proposes? Uh, I get, again, so we're doing that while we're shortchanging New Jersey Transit. So those commuters who are stuck at those platforms with canceled trains can thank the diversion of money to a new program like free uh, uh, community college. But it's a question no of one's choices. clamoring for, what? by the way. No uh, one's what? No one's clamoring for that, by no, the way. Hold it's, a it's student not who is not able to go to higher ed, the, a parent who is not our, able to afford it. Our community college is pretty affordable right now. But For there whom? was no movement until this governor came on the scene and created the movement. It wasn't there. You didn't have students protesting for free community college. Give me a break. Uh, overall, again, we have a finite amount of dollars. We need to, to, to meet our pension obligations. Ramp that up faster before you make some mm, of these other things. Let's talk about that. The governor, right before the budget addressed, there was a some say significant agreement between the state government and the Communication Workers of America, who in fact represent a significant number of public employees. A compromise, if you will. An increase, and if I have this wrong, I know you'll tell me. You've never been shy about that. I will. About getting those who are public employees in the Communication Workers of America to contribute more to their own health benefits, which in fact re reduces the state's obligation and helps us on the pension crisis. A good thing. All for it, yes. And I applaud the communication workers to, to step up and Governor uh, Murphy and work with Governor Murphy. I do, yes. Okay. Uh, now, the problem is that you can't do a very tiny step like this and declare victory, or say that because this happened, the problem is going to be solved over time with negotiations. Ain't going to happen. If you really are going to get the savings that we absolutely need. <clears throat> in the pension system? In, in the pension how bad is and it, health Declan? benefits system. Senator, how bad is it's it? It's bad. Uh, this year, we'll contribute around $8 billion just north of that. State between dollars pensions to the and health pension benefits, fund. Both pension and health Got benefits. It. That's more than 20% of our budget. If you talk to Moody's, if you talk to the ratings agencies, you need to be around 13% or less. We are at the highest percentage, and we're going in the next few years of phasing. We'll be at north of 25% without the major reforms that Senator Sweeney, to his credit, has advocated. I've the been Senate president. The Senate president. Give us one that would help progress. get the path to progress. And by the way, we're going to be joined by Senate President Steve Sweeney, who will talk about the path to progress, his plan to get our fiscal house in order, his approach to it. One significant step that needs to be taken to get our pension, public employee pension crisis, into a better place than where we are right now. It's a mix of pension and health benefits. Health benefits take them from Platinum Plus, which, which are an outrageous, it costs you more than $40,000 a year for a family. You're saying too good a deal? In the teachers. It's... It's more than taxpayers can afford, dramatically more. And by the way, you could pair those costs dramatically and still give our public workers better health care than just about anybody else gets. But don't teachers, and listen, the NJA is one of the major underwriters of what we do, and so they can speak for themselves. But here's the question. Isn't part of what happens for a teacher that he or she makes less than others, but there isn't, you get the advantage on the benefits. If you do it right for many teachers, because they pay a percentage of their premium, they will actually get some savings when we cut costs. Now, it's true. Some out-of-pocket costs okay. will go up. And I would Two also seconds, say that teachers are not overpaid. I think we pay them fairly. Uh, okay. But... We have, to, we have to make this work for them, for their future, for their families' future, and for the taxpayers. State Senator Declan O'Scanlan, 13th Legislative District. I appreciate, we appreciate you sharing your thoughts on this. Thanks, Steve. Important discussion. Thanks Thank for having you. me. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. I'm pretty confident we'll be right back right after this. To see more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at stateofaffairsnj.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. That's Lou Manzione. He is president, uh, Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in New Jersey, also president of the Independent College Fund in New Jersey. Good to see you, Lou. Thanks, Steve. Thanks to be. Many of your members, uh, member institutions, they're independent universities. Yes, public mission, independent universities. So we don't, we're not state universities. So they're, they're Seton Hall, Georgian Court. Is Princeton in there? Or? Princeton is in there. Stevens, uh, Stevens National Institute of Technology, right? right? Yes, Whole nationally recognized technical college, uh, Felician, Caldwell, uh, well. Caldwell, Centenary University. Some of them we know very well. But Fairly here's what's fascinating to me. This independent sector, 
not the public sector, both get public support. Yes. But the amount of support, state dollars, to independents, much lower, right? Uh, yes. By design? Um, we, we get the tuition assistant grants, which are very helpful to our students. Tag we grants. get a tag grants. We also get a very small amount of operating aid. That's where the publics get a, a lot more of that. Yeah. So it's, it's less support, uh, a lot less support per student. So it's order of sort of $2,000 per student support for our 65,000 students. Lou, do you think there is a big difference? We've, had, we've done so much on higher ed over the years. Do you think there's a significant difference between the students who go to independents versus publics? There's not actually that much of a difference. Uh, I mean, uh, there might be a misconception that we're more affluent. That's just simply not the case. I mean, certainly post-recession, our demographics are very different. A lot of first-generation. A lot of first-generation. Rich, first first generation, generation, uh, was the president of yeah, College. College. I remember yes, he'd come back those. every year and say, you have no idea how many first-generation, they would never be able to go to school, you'd often tell us. Right, right, we, without the tuition assistant grants and the, uh, and the other aid that we get. Now, we also raise about $900 million of institutional aid that we provide to our How? students uh, from donors, from corporations, from alumni. You know, fortunately, there's many who believe in higher ed for their philanthropy. Uh, we have a lot of great corporate sponsors in the state. This, this state is really fortunate. Trust me, corporate underwriters, foundation underwriters, we wouldn't be able to do what we do if it were not for them. Uh, and, so. and that's correct. And we're, we're really fortunate in this state to have such a strong corporate sector that believes in higher ed and understands that this is their talent pipeline of the future. At, excuse me, the, the question, Lou, of access, that's what keeps coming up. Yes. Affordability and access. More challenging access to independence? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, Steve, actually, about 10%, 14% of our students actually do not pay anything. They're lower income students or they have you know, excellent scholarship aid. 40% uh, pay less than $10,000. Uh, Say that again. Forty percent of our students pay less than ten thousand dollars in tuition and annual tuition. Because of the support. Be because of the support that we provide, mm -hmm. the institutional aid, the funds that we raise. Now, realistically, from scarce resources, things that can be done, you know, used for other things. Well, let me ask you this: the governor, Governor Murphy, we're, we're doing this program a little bit after governor's uh, budget address. He talked about, and if I have this wrong, I know you'll tell me, increasing aid to. Uh, non-documented citizens to go to um, institutions of higher learning, correct? The DACA students. It's yes. A good idea? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a good idea. I mean, uh, these will be our future, you know, skilled workers, our college graduates. Uh, there's a demographic decline in, this uni in, in, in the United States. We, also, we have kind of 10,000 baby boomers retiring every day. There will be a real crunch in the talent pipeline, particularly in sort of a northeastern state like ours. Um, we, according to you know, the, the governor's plan, mm. you know, based on the innovation economy, <clears throat> is we need a lot more, you know, citizens with college credentials. The, the DACA students, we welcome them uh, on our campuses. We have large numbers on our campuses. Really good idea. Real quick, uh, I'm going to ask you about the value of co uh, higher education in just a second. But real quick, the, the, the whole question of the two-year county and community colleges, the transition to a four-year school, uh, happening more and more. Yes, and, and, and a good thing. This is a good idea? This is a good How is it a good idea? How is it a good thing if you're not getting them for all four years? Well, we, we want them in the system. But so we have great articulation agreements with really all of the county colleges, all of the community colleges. We have guaranteed transfer policies with, with most of the, the community colleges. Um, if, if that's the pathway that they're coming to our institutions in third and fourth year, we welcome it. Meaning there's no, no one way, no one path. There's, there's no one path. That's it. We want multiple paths. You know, this is interesting. I had a, a conversation with one of your colleagues, uh, the president over at uh, St. Peter's University, Dr. Yeah, Gene Dr. Kanaki, Kanaki, about the value of higher ed. Because we actually had uh, Gary Vanderchuk, who a lot of people know is an internet sensation, young guy, entrepreneur, said, college is overrated, don't need it, don't waste all that money on college, put that money into running a business. And Gene had very clear ideas as to who that may work for and who not, you say? I, I say there's no better investment than a college education, particularly in the economy, particularly in the governor's plan for the most inclusive, diverse, 
innovation economy is that we need to be playing with the full team and that team needs to have college credentials for the 21st century economy. I mean, the, the countries and the other international uh, where we're competing will require advanced post-secondary credentials. Uh, we're, we're clear of that. We're on one of the fastest gradients of transition in the workplace probably known is that advanced credentials that you get from a college education are critically important. We don't know the careers that we'll actually be planning, pe uh, preparing people but, but for Excuse me, sorry for interrupting, but in a few seconds we have left, Lou, some of the curriculum is changing to adapt to what we think those professions and fields may be. Yes, there's a certain amount of the curriculum that's aligned with professional aspirations. Right. All good. I'm an engineer my, myself. However... But the field's the, changing. But the field is changing. And what I studied 30 years ago was not the engineering that I do now. So therefore, the fundamentals, that core of liberal learning has to be there because we are preparing for careers that we don't know will exist yet. You were just listening to Lou Manzione. Is it Manzioni or Manzione? Manzione. I'm just checking. Yes, yeah. You know, yes. I can ask you that. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> president of the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in Jersey, also president of the Independent College Fund in New Jersey, which is the fundraising arm. Yes. Thank you so much, Lou. Thanks, I'm Steve, Steve Adubato. This is State of Affairs. By the way, if you're wondering where we're coming from, it's the Agnes Veras NJTV studio in beautiful Brick City, North New Jersey. Catch you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by Guarini Institute for Government and Leadership at St. Peter's University. Choose New Jersey. The New Jersey Economic Development Authority. The law firm of Gibbons PC. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, St. Joseph's Health, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Autism is one of the fastest-growing developmental disorders in the U.S. Here in New Jersey, one in every 41 children is diagnosed with autism. And when a child is diagnosed with autism, every member of the family is affected. While there currently is no cure for autism, early detection and intervention can offer critical improvements for the child and tremendous benefits for the family. To learn more about autism, contact the Binder Autism Center at St. Joseph's Children's Hospital.